greet you once again this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for those that are watching by video, our name is Pastor Michael Staub, and this is Way of New Life Ministries. And you can find us on the web at wayofnewlifeministries.org. And we thank you for, for dialing in today. And today we're, our message is going to start in the epistle of Peter, the first epistle of Peter, the third chapter, beginning with verse 1. And then we'll be turning to Matthew 12, 33 and Proverbs 18, 21. And it reads, Likewise, ye wives, be in subject to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now, I know that's a hard thing for a lot of women, especially wives, to, to swallow in today's world where everything is equal. But one thing that is missed, I think, with this scripture is the recognition of the equality of that word because we're all subject to something or somebody. Amen. If you want to talk about the husband who is subject to the Lord, we're all subject to the Lord, but this is about the order of God, where he is the head of the house, is responsible for the wife, the children, to God. He's held accountable for the provision, for the protection, the clothing, and when, the, when that order is followed, there's a blessing because he's also required to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So that's a giving thing. This isn't about the general barking orders in the house and asking the wife to jump at his command. It's about love. And love... If you read about love, you can read it in Corinthians 13th chapter, what love really is. It's selfless. And that's not the main reason for today's message. For as we read, there are, there are husbands and men out there that their wives are following Christ, but they're not. And the Lord gives us an answer to help those situations. And it's just not the, hus the wife or the husband, but it can be the other way around. Where the Lord talks about a holy conversation. And that's what we want to focus on today is, is our conversations. We read in the word, if you read in Matthew 12, 33, we read about out of the heart, out of the heart, the moth speaks. Whatever is dwelling in your heart is what's going to come out of your mouth. So if you're filled with fear and doubt, if there's hatred or jealousy, unforgiveness, if you're frustrated, if you're upset, if you're angry, Versus, do you have faith in your heart today or hope? Do we have compassion, understanding, forgiveness? And we have to ask ourselves today, if the Lord took a snapshot of our heart, what would we see on its walls? The word teaches us that we're known by our fruits. Would he see judgmentalness? You know, a lot of us weigh out and are wondering why our mates aren't coming to the Lord. And we have to ask ourselves, what's coming out of our tongue? We can read in Proverbs 18, 21, that out of your tongue is a most powerful weapon, or we're not weapon, but powerful part of your body because it leads you to either life or death. What, you, what we speak with our tongue, the words have power. If we get up in the morning 
and we're all negative about our state of life, about our finances, about the rejection that we receive in this world, our age, what we're going through, well, our tongue's leading us right to a ditch of despair or turmoil or depression. Versus if we start speaking rather than I'm not smart enough or I'm not rich enough, I'm too small, I'm too big, I'm too young, my family's dysfunctional, all this negativity versus, or do I say God loves me for who I am? It doesn't matter how big or how small because with God I can do all things. God's not done with me yet. God can take a little bit and multiply it Amen. and use it. That his grace is sufficient unto the day. And we start speaking that positivity that's going to lead us to the light. That God's capable of taking care of me to prosper me if I just turned them. And see, we have these decisions each and every day because this word that's coming out of our mouth has an effect on our relationships. Like if I'm in my house, if I keep judging my wife, if I keep putting her down, if it's all negative, I'm building walls and I'm tearing down our relationship versus building it up, being forgiving. Say, that's all right, honey. I don't care if you were late today. I still love you. Amen. Okay. Or that brother or that sister that, you know, really teed you off and you come to the grips of being able to forgive them. We start to enter into Christ's ways, his word his ways versus our ways. And that's what we are in this veil of tears, this valley of decision. That's what we face each and every day. The choice, are we gonna go his way or our way? Are we gonna, mm -hmm. we gonna walk towards life or to death? The importance, are we willing to trade our thoughts for his thoughts or his ways for our ways? To be willing to be giving to that mate or that friend or it doesn't have to be in our relationships it could be at our jobs to be more understanding to to work as far as our bosses the word teaches us to 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 deal with them as unto the lord except for things like sin and that goes across the board our personal lives? Are we willing to understand or the importance of God's word to know what his word is? To help us on that pathway. Knowing the difference between good and evil. Because see, what's in our heart matters. And that's where repentance and asking the Lord to clean the inside of the cup. A lot of times we're so aware of the outside. We're dressing up nice. We're watching our words because we don't want to slip or offend someone. You know, when the heart's right, you don't have to worry about what your words are. It's going to come automatically. Your kindness is going to flow. Your long suffering is going to flow. Your faith is going to flow. And see, all along, God has been dealing, is most interested in our spirit. Because your spirit is what guides everything else. What's going on inside of you, where he says the kingdom is within you, is what he wants to deal with. And if we're not willing to deal with what's plastered on the walls of our heart, if I have doubt up here and I got fear 
and I got lust that is the wrong kind of lust. Well, no wonder I'm going through these storms or these situations that I'm going through because I haven't dealt, I haven't repainted the walls. I haven't allowed the Lord to take them pictures down and replaced it with faith, with goodness, long suffering, kindness. And that's where the price is, is, is submitting and, and be willing to allow him to deal with our hearts. Because with that, he frees your spirit. That's where the God's freedom comes. That's where his relationship is, is built with him. It doesn't matter if our marriage is on the rocks or if you lost your job or you've been rejected, abandoned by family and friends. Things haven't been going right for you. The question is, do you want to fix it? Do you want to change your direction? Do you want, do you tired of circling the old mountain? Do you want to turn the page in your life? And that's the victory that we have at the cross with Jesus is because he's alive. That's why he went there. And that's where we can go individually to him each and every day and allow the master builder to rearrange and build that positivity within us and get us set up on the right path and the purposes in our life and start to deal with people the way he wants us to deal with them. Do you want to turn the darkness and the evil and the goodness and the light in your life, sadness to joy? Jealousy and hatred to love, disorder to order. It's about turning to Jesus who loves you, who finished it at the cross and draws us to it to fix all that. He said out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. The power of the Holy Ghost where you receive that baptism where you are immersed, your whole being's immersed in his presence and in his power. Jesus is the word made flesh. He's the one that paid for the price for all the, the times that we broke his laws that caused the fear and the doubt to come. Do we realize, all, for God's word hasn't changed. That's why fear entered into Adam and Eve when they broke, when they were disobedient and they separated themselves from God, fear came in. They were hiding themselves from God. Shame came into their lives. They covered themselves with fig leaves. And God, as he came, look, he says, where are you? You separated yourself. And that's where he's calling mankind today each and every one of us to himself to deal with the heart. To redeem us, our tongue, our mind, and our heart so that we might dwell in his presence. We'll have a clear mind then. You ever notice that sometimes when you're going through whatever, that thing keeps re-coming up in your mind, it keeps circling? That's your conscious mind. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you to deal with it, to take it to the cross, to take it to Jesus, to settle it. Because when you're, our heart's clean, when he's able to move and do his, his work within us, we wake up with a clear mind. In a clear heart, we have a positive outlook. We look at people with a positive outlook, whether it's our wife who is, who's been criticizing us from the time we got married or not. We can love her and forgive her or vice versa. If it's our husband. If it's because I tried something and I failed or I'm arrested or I was in jail, they arrested Jesus. 
And there's nothing that he cannot do within our lives to bring us into that place that he was calling each of us to come to. He's alive and that's, his, and that's what he's bringing to his people today is, is deal with the root of the situation. You know, a lot of times we want to change our address. We want to move. We want to, we're, look, we're changing jobs. We're doing all this thing in the physical. And we're wondering why. The devil's very good at hiding the problem. You've been hurt and you can't let go of that problem that somebody hurts you rather than forgive them as Jesus said. So it's an open door for the, for the enemy to attack us. And this is where he's speaking to the church is deal with the heart. Be willing to repent, which means to turn away from the things that separate you from him. Because he's willing to meet you there, not to condemn you, but to forgive you and to re-enkindle you, your li each of our lives. This is what church is all about. It's about our spirit. Because in that spirit, when we enter into that love and his joy and his peace, it's not in things. It's not in the ornament. And there's nothing wrong with wearing ornaments. You can wear all the jewelry you want as long as it's, it's not controlling your life. Because as we read on in Peter, it says, while they behold your chast conversation coupled with fear, the purity of your words and that's where our example and that example in the world where they hear your they receive your kindness your goodness do you ever notice how blessed it is when someone opens a door for you if you're carrying a lot of packages or someone lets you out when you're trying to get into traffic and someone backs or lets you get in front of them that courtesy common courtesy Verse three, whose adorning, let it not be that of the outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair, the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. If you wanna know what God's looking at today, if you wanna know what God's dealing with, it's our hearts. And when that heart is right, the blessings flow. And when our heart's not right, the Holy Spirit's knocking on our door, trying to get our attention to get it right. And I end with this. In my life, there's been times where I had the most difficult time shaking situations spiritually in my life. One in particular. I was rebuking it. I was reading the word for hours. I was fasting. And it came to the point where the Lord spoke to my heart as I was trying to deal with this. And his word to me was this. He said, forgive them. And I was trying to forgive. But I needed God's grace to forgive to truly get free because I would forgive them with my mouth, but my heart was still hurt because of the rejection. So I was wrestling with this forgiveness and I kept saying, Lord, I forgive them. I kept, I kept pursuing, I kept holding on to the word that he gave me to set me free. And one day there came the grace. And it not only took it out of my heart, but it took it out of my mind. And I looked at that person in a whole new perspective. It didn't matter what they thought of me or what, it didn't matter. It was bouncing off of me now. And I was free of it. And I was able to look at them in a whole new light and have peace in the midst of it. 
And that's what he's calling this church to, is to have peace in the midst of this world that we live. Because the world is, is nuts right now in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different things that bother each of us in different ways. But the Lord's calling us to that sanctuary, to that still waters, to that secret place in him as we go forward in this world and walk with him and how we treat one another. Because that's his two greatest commandments. He said to love him and to love one another. When we do that, we fulfill his word. So we ask in our prayer time to give him that time to rearrange, to give us the grace to do what he's asking us to do. And to persist and not to give up because his word says we can do all things through him. I couldn't forgive on my own, but with him I could. So, Lord, today we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your word. And if you're watching by video and you've never experienced God's presence in your life, if you've never experienced his forgiveness, we ask you to pray with me right now. And just close your eyes and just ask our Lord Jesus Christ, to come into your heart to be Lord of your life to forgive you your sins he's alive and he's real and he promises not to turn you away to fill you with his Holy Spirit because he loves you he died on the cross for you and you can experience that presence of God where old things pass away all things become new where the eyes of your understanding are open to good and evil Receive him today and call on him to, to give you that power from on high, the Holy Spirit, to give you the strength to do it his way. We thank you all for coming and we thank you, Lord Jesus, today for all that you did today. We once again thank you for Savior who was baptized today and dedicated to you. Until we meet again, Lord, we pray that the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he bless your coming in and your going out, your rising up and your lying down in your work and in your leisure. Until that great day when you stand before him, where there's no sunset and no dawn, may God impart to each of us his richest and deepest blessings, we pray. Amen. And don't, and don't be afraid when the Lord convicts you. Don't be afraid to look in your heart. Because that's where you're going to find that life in him. In Jesus' name. And your physical life will be blessed as a result of it. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you again for coming. And they're going to put out some cookies or something for those that want to stay in fellowship and have a snack. <laughs>